Welcome to Doc's Lab and our second Master Series. Welcome to Doc's Lab and our second master series. I do believe this is the 104th video in our second master series, the 53rd video on basic processors, the 16th video on sculpting processors, the sixth video in noise, and this is the final video dealing with noise. We're going to address a couple topics to try to make sure that you're able to get done what you need to do as far as noise. Remember, the biggest thing is going to be a lot of experimentation on your part. And the next thing is you may for a while want to go the process in reverse and starting with like harmonic application to distortion to saturation to noise because it's the least audible sound. And also really keep in mind of the masking issue, that things blend together, they glue together, the, a lot of things will be out of phase of each other, that hides and masks things, and really keep that in mind as you're working it. But every one of these aspects, including noise, is going to change the timber of what is happening and sometimes in drastic ways and sometimes you can add a lot of noise and get away with it and have it still come out sounding really good if you automate or if you apply the noise well or any one of the other um, sculpting processors or processing that we'll be talking about. The next thing is that, you know, whether or not when you start out and if whether or not you're using, you know, the third way that I showed you, using a sampler, you have a lot of control of the sampler. Not only is it a sampler itself, but you've got ADSR controls, lots of other controls, things you can add in with FX controls, all kinds of things. And on top of it, you can actually use the MIDI editor that it can give you tons of more controls and on top of it, automating with it. So it can really be, oh, it can really be a huge huge application tool but normally it's the third way to go about it that's the least noticeable you know you can get it done really fast not to concern yourself too much and spend so much time on it or if you go to the second way I showed you and you're talking about using you know using something like a gate or an expander that you know just take your time in working the envelope of sound as you're putting in there be real careful about how much you're putting in there that's affecting the timber but really work on being able to control the envelope best you can with those tools and if you go to like automation like we talked about we're going to automation you know automation is a huge tool that when you start automating it you have serious control of your noise application you'd be surprised how much noise you can actually put in there and not have it sound detrimental that's actually sculpting the audio and changing the timbre of it using an application like automation because of the control factor you have where the other two you don't have normally you don't aren't so much worried about controlling the noise as much that with the work that you're trying to do. And really keep in mind that there's a couple things you're trying to do. You, the envelope of sound, you really need to take into consideration that you may be affecting it and keep that in mind when you're using the tools that we're talking about and understand the envelope of sound can be very erratic. Sometimes it may be very simple, an attack, a decay, a sustain, and release, like on a drum hit or something. But on a vocal, that that envelope of sound is pretty complex, it's not like, you know, an ADSR. The envelope of sound is very complicated, and so you really have to take that into consideration when you're working your tools. And also remember that, you know, the actual timber of sound, that noise is one of the least audible components in that, but it can have a drastic effect. Not only will it have a drastic effect, but it also can change the sound like equalization to where if I add it in the low end, it's like me boosting the low end with the EQ, but I'm only I'm using noise to do it. So not only is it going to boost the low end to some point, but it's also going to change the timber to some point besides affecting the equalization of it, and it can have two different effects. So you really need to keep that in mind that it can be a very 
you know, effective sculpting tool whenever you're doing sound processing. And like I said, sometimes you can add quite a bit more than you would think you could add that if you just add a raw noise file that you just can't add much, it's real obvious. But with your automation, your other tools, you might be surprised how much you can actually add and change the timber and affect the timber, you know, and just really keep that in mind. And besides that, you know, when we're talking about this, be real careful of adding noise you don't need. High pass and low pass filter it. And so that you're not adding noise that you don't need. Does that make sense? Because it's like room noise and things like that, you know, noise from your fish tank, the air conditioner, outside noise, da, da, da. A lot of times that can be full spectrum. And it's not just helping, you know, it's not, you know, it's, a, it's seen as a bad thing a lot of times because it's not being used as a sculpting tool. It's being, it's affecting everywhere in the spectrum that you don't want it to. So learn to control your noise, where you're applying it, how you're applying it, how you don't apply it where you don't need it and things like that you know just as we just lies just like with all the other processing tools and we're doing sound sculpting but uh, seriously with noise because most audio engineers will tell you that no I don't want noise in my production bro you know unless you have a $50,000 analog desk and then they're really happy with saturation <laughs> you know, you know, see it the same way so by the time we get done you're gonna see that whole concept a lot differently anyway because noise is one of those elements that they're looking for when they're doing analog warmth and things like that. And also sound sculpting tools, it can very much change the timber enough to really, with the other processing you do, working together, have a phenomenal impact, especially on out front tracks and things farther back in the mix that a little bit of work on them it doesn't take much sometimes to really help glue and blend things together and add a little bit of atmospheric, you know, dirtiness or rawness or, you know, smokiness and things like that and help just take things that are way too hyper clean and, you know, just help soften them up a little bit. You know, besides, you know, being able to affect timbers and actually affect the timber of sound on any given instrument that it can have this small tool and this very subtle tool can have a seriously serious impact on your production once you learn to use it well which is going to take a lot of practice experimentation and just utilizing it and then utilizing it in conjunction with the other tools we're talking about so you have an understanding of how what happens when you start working them all together like you know putting a soup together you know because it's the same kind of thing you got a little bit of oregano a little bit of garlic a little bit of basil you know and a little bit of you know parmesan cheese and at just the right amounts in this soup yeah dude you know and it's it, it is like that, you know, so really keep that in mind. It's just not one tool by itself. It's a part of an arsenal that you're using together. And as you get better at understanding that, that you'll use each one of them individually much better. So really keep that in mind. So I just wanted to make a short video as basically an end to the noise segment because with the first videos that were in this segment should give you a lot of insight about using any of these applications and processors and tools. And the short segment, we basically want to talk about applying it and then get you practicing it so that you can start making some captures, work on getting yourself some good captures, cleaning them up well, and then start applying this stuff to see what it's actually doing to the stuff you're working in in your studio with your headphones on and really being able to hear what's happening there. and. Adjust affect it in different areas an upper end and the lower end you know full spectrum on there different types of noise what different colors do what happens when you mix different colors what happens when you mix different colors and just certain bandwidths when you're doing a vocal you know you just want the lower bandwidth or the mid range or the upper range or you know it's up in the upper end to give it a little bit of more shine and you know brassy sound you know that's you know you're not trying to get hiss does that make sense you're not trying to get low end rumble and mud you're trying to actually you know, ex you're trying to actually improve the sound in some way and really get used to using your critical listening and thinking, what would make this better? And as you get more used to using these noise files, that will become apparent to you that you will start going, oh, well, that I know from experiment with this that that would, might help that in that area in conjunction with saturation or with the harmonic work and equalization I'm doing it, da, 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 
da 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 you know, really fine tuning your soup. And this is an individual basis thing. It can be very different on very different productions with different instruments, with different vocalists, and it just goes on and on. And the whole soup can be very different when no matter in each different situation or application. So really keep that in mind. So I really certainly hope you enjoyed this next segment on noise, and I certainly hope that clarified some things so that you can get busy utilizing this and hopefully make it a really a big part of when you start mixing your soup, when you're doing your sound sculpting and you're trying to make things sound better, you're trying to compensate for inexpensive equipment or problems you were having with the equipment or captures and things like that and start really you know experimenting around with it so that it can be a very very useful tool to you. Peace, help, love. I certainly hope you enjoyed this segment on noise, and I will see you in the next video.